What's up guys, welcome back. This is Baja Hunters 2. I am going to be looking for another Baja for 300 bucks. This is my limit that I want to spend. I did find a nice listing on Letgo. I have been in communication with the guy. There's only one picture. Let me put it up here for you. As always, there's not much information to go on. The Baja looks nice. It's all blacked out. It says it has a 30.5 cc engine. It says it has disc brakes and it has a Jet Pro exhaust. Now, usually, chances are if there's no good pictures half of this is probably not true but hey we're gonna find out now for good luck this time I am going to be driving my Lincoln for those of you that don't know I don't only drive a Prius I have a really nice 2004 Lincoln LS V8 that makes 280 horsepower it's a rear wheel drive this is basically the Jaguar XJ8 from the time as you know, in terms of money, I only want to spend 300. I offered up 300 to the guy. He came back and said, no, let's make the deal at 350. That is not that far of a spread. He came down from 650 to basically 350 right away. I know that if I just show up with 300 bucks, this is what sometimes people do when they go buy cars, just show up with less money. Be like, hey, I don't have the rest of the dollars. You want to sell me the car? Put it on the road today, I'll take it. Hopefully the principles of buying used cars I learned years ago can apply to HPI buy Baja clones which this actually is I asked the guy whether it's a clone and he was honest he said yes this is a clone so that's already a good sign now hopefully the upgrades on this clone are worth it and maybe I could put this into the trunk of this Lincoln today here it is guys I picked it up 300 bucks the guy accepted I am happy I got some cool extras with this came with two pretty much new tires the rears check these out these are hostile slicks these things are actually belted they do not balloon really cool I've never owned these check out the engine I've never had anything other than the Roven this is an RCMK this is a 30 cc it looks like it has a cover on the pull start pretty cool I'm not gonna go over all of this right now but I wanted to show you guys how I picked it up and as is condition right over here the front even has disc brakes wow the remote is a fly sky notice it says km right over here so this is a king motors clone it has this old school volt watch which tells you whether the battery is high or low pretty cool and look at this this was the original body that was on this thing the black body that i saw in the pictures but it actually has a really cool looking flamed out body and it says hpi right over here so at least the body is an original hpi that's a benefit there's a whole bunch of other upgrades on this okay guys so the owner said there's some kind of electronics radio issue so the system is on right now you could tell it's steering everything seems to be working correctly let me start this thing up hopefully the kill switch that's in here is going to shut it down that's how we'll know whether there's some kind of interference or signal loss Running okay so far. I'm walking pretty far away from it. It seems fine so far. I don't know what he's talking about. Well, the throttle response is a little weird. Oh, and it's shut down so yeah that must be it the kill switch has killed it let me come over back to it I'm gonna try to start it back up and it seems like the kill switch at least works so that's pretty great what's up guys all these video clips you just saw were about a year ago I actually purchased this last summer I started doing videos on it and you saw just before I took it to the little RC track to test out the failsafe test out the radio system and the motor just kept shutting down I had some kind of interference at that point, I basically just left this alone. I moved on to my other RC projects that I had. And it is about a year later that I am now coming back to it. Guess what? I just have a lot of extra free time because of this quarantine. So I figured why not break out this old King Motors buggy? Unfortunately, what you see right now, it's pretty much, you know, in more or less pieces. The roll cage here is disconnected. The body's off. The pull start. Yep, this is the original pull start. Um, the carburetor, this is the original 990 Walbro carb. Yep, all of these parts are on the table. You must be asking yourself, bro, have you been busy? What have you been doing to this original King Motors Baja? 
Well, the other day I went to try to start it up and nothing I could do. It just did not fire. And to be honest with you, I didn't even record any of that because I, I was expecting this thing to start. It's not like you want to go to it, you know, you pull it, it doesn't start. It was basically one problem after another. First, the pull start broke. Then, of course, you know, I looked at it, I tried to put like a Roman pull start on, I made a mistake because I fitted the easy start one on it. And the easy start pull start is different than the regular, you know, Roven Zenoa style, you know, 30cc regular basic pull start with like this cog mechanism inside. This one is clearly very worn. You can tell by these cogs, you could see that there are basically a diagonals now. So what I wound up doing just to see, you know, if it was that, I just fitted my pull start from my Red Cat Rampage. It fit here, no problem. I have one on order now. But before that, before the pull start broke, I realized there's probably a problem with the carb. And uh, that's why you see the carb right here on the table. We're gonna actually disassemble it inside and take a look at the diaphragm, see what it looks like. Now, if you're asking yourself what kind of fuel I was running, I live in New York City. There is no fuel available here from any gas station that does not have ethanol in it. But I did run ethanol stabilizer in this. Let me see if I actually have some, yeah. So I did run this ethanol stabilizer in the fuel, so I don't think the ethanol is really what it is. This is the oldest one that I have. Now, you just saw me go and pick it up from the guy. The guy did tell me it had some kind of radio interference issue. And obviously it had a radio interference issue, which is really weird because it ran perfectly. Sometimes it shut off, sometimes it did not shut off. Now, the interesting thing about this is it actually is the only RC that I own that has a kill switch. So this is a Killer B Super B kill switch. Pretty much the best one you can get in the industry. I tested it multiple times, the kill switch works. Before all of this needed to be replaced, you know, I went through the whole fit scale maintenance and inspection testing uh, techniques that I know. First, you wanna check for spark. I tested the spark plug. Then I replaced the spark plug, you know, you never know. In fact, you could actually have spark, you can see it visually, and the thing still won't start the car. But then I thought, well, okay, so it has spark. Maybe it's not getting fuel. I even sprayed starting fluid into the carburetor while it was, you know, under full throttle to see if it'll start. Still nothing happened. At that point, I was pretty much baffled. I decided to order, you know, just for the time being, the carb on the car right now, I'm gonna show you a picture here of the eBay auction I got it from. It came in a bag like this with a whole bunch of extra parts. You know, there's like fuel line here. There's, let me show you guys, there's fuel line here. There's extra filters that it came with, extra primer bulbs. This stuff really doesn't matter. I just needed a carb. Now, a lot of people say, make sure you get wall bro. Make sure you get original. Well, this is an original wall bro. You could tell because on the bottom, it says wall bro. This carb is a 990 because you could tell it has no choke here on the side. So the only way to get fuel in here is to prime this thing correctly, which is all right. I decided to get the same replacement carb. It was only about like 13 bucks. And guys, it actually works. I am, I am very surprised. I ran this already just before recording this video and I'll show you some clips. Maybe, you know, once I put this together, we'll see. It runs great. It holds the idle great. Um, I did have to mess around with the needles a little bit, but you know, just turn them in, turn them out, like two and a half turns, boom. There's your starting point for the low speed needle. It actually runs. This carb, not bad. Of course, I haven't like cycled it through the whole RPM range, you know, this and that, but we know that the motor is not destroyed in here. I really did not want to replace this motor. This is an RCMK. Uh, it's currently sold out at DDM Racing, one of the better motors. The Baja chassis and this one itself has had a lot of money spent on it. Look at the front wheels, guys. These are not the originals. I, in fact, don't even know what these are from. The rubber compound is relatively hard, but look inside what's in here. Yep, you have a disc brake system. It does work, I did check it. It's powered by your basic throttle servo. So, you know, when your regular throttle servo applies brakes, it just pulls on this as well. So you gotta make sure you have a good servo. And this one is a Savox, thank God, that money has already been laid out on this. I'm good there. Look at the original receiver that this thing came with. Do you guys notice anything weird about this antenna here? I think this crimp here on the antenna wire itself coming out of the original King Motors receiver, it says KM right here, guys, is 
the reason why I was having interference. Now, believe it or not, this is actually pretty serious. An antenna crimp like this will cause terrible signal, which is what I had. Now, I replaced the original radio system with, you know, another fly sky that I run on everything. So I'm actually running the same exact radio that I had before. I just want you guys to take a look at this. Do you see what this is? That's right. I'm using my classic T-Max Chevron tires as a support for the Baja. That's what this was all about. The Nitro Gang and the Gas Gang, we're getting together and hanging out. I'm gonna power the radio on. It's on right here, it says KMB. For me, that means King Motors Baja, right? I'm holding the kill switch. I'm gonna turn on the radio system. I want you guys to observe this, the LED. It's all about this LED. Okay, so when it glows green, right now it's green. This is good. The system is ready. Now before, it was still green, but like I just could not get it started because of the damn carb. Now we have this new fake carb. It, it's all good. I cleaned the air filter. Of course, the fuel tank is old. Everything here is old. I have not even replaced the fuel lines. This is just testing for now. But guys, check this out. When I turn the radio off, watch what happens to the LED red and it starts blinking. So this is what you want to happen. Now when I power it back on, it goes through its uh, you know setup process and it should be green again. This is a third channel operated a remote kill switch but it also works if you have a two channel radio. If you turn off the radio power, it still turns off. But I'm gonna press this third channel button. Check this out, same thing is gonna happen. I could turn it back on. I'm gonna press the third channel button and it's going through its setup, and it's green. I'm very happy, this is actually the only Gas RC I have that has a safety kill switch, so congratulate me. Finally, finally, I'm, I'm one step ahead of the game here. Here's the front disc brake system, as I said before, it's you know pretty much a standard item here. You have a rotor inside, and uh, metal calipers that actuate it. Pretty standard type of stuff. The hard part here is getting this thing centered correctly with the left and right tire. The brake lines themselves go to the brake line splitter. I don't care what the actual technical terms for these are, but it's like a fairly complicated design. There's a lot of metal pieces here, a lot of shimming to do. There's a lot of variables. Generally, these mechanical systems, one of their major problems is getting the left wheel and the right wheel to brake exactly the same. It's, it's just really a factor of geometry. Now, I have it set more or less correct based on, you know, how I had it before, but this is one of those things where you have to literally test it out in the field. But yeah, guys, so far, the radio system seems to be okay. Um, this should be good. I just gotta get this thing back together so it doesn't look so freaking sloppy. And then we'll be good to go.